God is holy mystery, beyond complete understanding, above perfect description. Yet, in love, the one eternal God seeks relationship. So God creates the universe, and with it the possibility of being and relating. God tends the universe, mending the broken, and reconciling the estranged. God enlivens the universe, guiding all things toward harmony with their source. Grateful for God's loving action, we cannot keep from singing. With the church through the ages, we speak of a God as one and triune. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We also speak of God as Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer. God, Christ, and Spirit. Mother, Friend, and Comforter. Source of Life. Living Word. And Bond of Love. And in other ways that speak faithfully of the One on whom our hearts rely, the fully shared life at the heart of the universe. We witness to holy mystery that is holy love.
Hello and welcome to worship here at East End United Regional Ministry. Wherever you are joining us from, whatever you are bringing with you to this time this morning, please know that you are welcome here. You are welcome here in Christ's name. I'm the Reverend Brianne Swan, and if you are regularly joining us for online worship, you will notice that this is a little bit of a different service. Because the on-site congregation is in the Herndale room for worship this morning, and it's a little tricky to live stream from that space, this service has been pre-recorded. It uses pieces of different online worship services that I've put together over the years. And the reflection was recorded live for Resistance Church online worship for Trinity Sunday last year in 2023. We are talking all Trinity all the time this morning. One and three, three and one, what the heck does that even mean? There will be a time where you will be able to move into the comments and discuss among yourselves what the Trinity means to you. Before we move deeper into worship, it is the custom of this community to name some things that are important to us. The first is that we are an affirming congregation within the United Church of Canada. What that means is that we are public, intentional, and explicit about not only welcoming, but our absolute affirmation of everyone within 2S and LGBTQIA plus communities, as well as those who are have been labeled in ways that are traditionally used to divide. So whether it be classism, racism, xenophobia, misogyny, all these things that have been used to say who is in and who is out, we do what we can to reject those labels. And we are a work in progress. Even as we work towards progress, we do not always get it right. But we do know that the diversity found here within this community is part of what makes us whole and holy. We also acknowledge that long before there was a church here, long before what we now call Toronto existed, this land has been stewarded and tended to from time before memory. And in particular, we acknowledge this as the traditional territory of the Anishinaabek, the Haudenosaunee, the Seneca, the Wendat, and the Mississaugas of the Credit. We gather here in gratitude. Let us pray. Holy and loving God, you bind us to yourself this day, God of seraphim. You reach out to draw us ever closer, that we might feel the brush of your grace soft upon us that we might feel the healing touch of your compassion resting gently within us. You bind us to yourself this day. You keep us by your side, that we might walk with you through the streets of the kingdom, bringing hope to the despairing, offering consolation to the brokenhearted, sharing love with those tossed aside by the world. Spirit of justice, you bind us to yourself this day. You fill our hearts with living water that they might overflow to parched people. You teach us how to give ourselves away so we might take on the burdens of others. Holy, holy, holy God, we bind ourselves to you this day, and we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 through Genesis 2, verse 4. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. 
God saw that the light was good and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day and the darkness God called night and there was evening and there was morning the first day. And God said, Let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so. God called the dome sky. And there was evening and there was morning the second day. And God said, Let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together God called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let them be for signs, and for seasons, and for days and years, and let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night, and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give them light upon the earth to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening and there was morning the fourth day. And God said, Let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters, and every living creature that moves, of every kind of which the waters swarm, and every winged bird of every kind, and God saw that it was good. God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things, and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind, and the cattle of every kind, and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created the human, humanity, Ha-Adam, in God's image. In the image of God, God created him, it, male and female, God created them. God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and fill the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. 
God said, See, I have given you every plant, yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food, and every beast of the earth and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that God had made, and indeed it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day God finished the work that God had done. And God rested on the seventh day from all the work that God had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all the work that God had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and of the earth when they were created. Christians have been passing the peace from nearly the beginning of Christ followers coming together to share in life and story with one another. And so in this time, I invite you to move into the chat and type your name, maybe where you're joining us from, and offer the peace of Christ to one another. May the peace of Christ be with you. Isaiah chapter 6, verses 1 through 8. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him, each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the thresholds shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me! I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips, yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it, and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, 
here am I. Send me. Your peace. 
Second Corinthians chapter 13 verses 11 through 13. Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order, listen to my appeal, agree with one another, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss, all the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. So James and I were just sitting here going, this is a weird reading. It's It feels a little bit like whoever was putting together the new revised common lectionary was like, or I guess the just the common lectionary in the first place, which is like, we need something for Trinity Sunday that just pulls out um, the three persons of the Trinity. Today is Trinity Sunday. If you are part of a worshiping community that meets in person, that follows the Revised Common Lectionary, you've probably already heard these readings today. But it's a short reading. Paul does his usual um, hugs and kisses, see you later, signing off. Um, doesn't say leave a, or keep a room for me. <laughs> but... Um, but it's a bit awkward because the Trinity and the Trinity is kind of a little bit awkward. And so this isn't, we don't have a full sermon tonight. This is one of our more just Swanee's random thoughts about things. Um, we had our gentle readings and music last week. This is the Swanee's random thoughts about the Trinity. Cause, and if you struggle with the Trinity, I am, kind of right with you on that. I spent a long, long time feeling like this, you know, what is this three in one, one in three? I remember very clearly when I was leading a community ministry north of the city and uh, we would have these uh, potluck dinners and people would be joining us who were Muslim and who were Hindu. And I remember really clearly sitting down with these two men who were like, I don't understand like this whole Trinity thing. How can God be one and three all at the same time? But for me, one of the reasons that when I was younger, I struggled with the Trinity was because I was completely turned off by the overly patriarchal language used in my home congregation to describe God, particularly the first person within the Trinity, God the Father. So whenever we would say Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, I think I don't need a daddy God. I was trying to deconstruct my mind from imagining God as an old white dude with a long beard sitting on a throne, taking notes on my thoughts and my actions and judging everything I did. And so because I didn't like that one piece, I threw the whole thing out. I had no use for it. And maybe you don't either. And if so, that's okay. But as we share a bit about our thoughts on the Trinity, I'd like to share with you some of the ways my heart has shifted over time and how while a doctrine of the Trinity may not be a perfect way of describing God, just as any way we try to describe God will inevitably come up short, talking about God being one and three has helped me fall in love once again with the different expressions of who God is and how I experience God's call on my heart. One thing that I appreciate about the Trinity is how the oneness of God is a reminder that no matter how hard we try, what humans may know of God will never be exhaustive. There is always more to God than we can comprehend, but that thinking of God through the lens of three parts or experiences or personalities allows for a tangible and practical means through which to grapple with the sheer vastness that is God. 
The three within the one give particular and practical ways to understand and communicate God's claim on us. In the Trinity, God is not only doing for us, but also being for us. Without compromise, unity, and distinction, wholly coexist within the Trinity in the way that feels relevant to me. Our individualization and participation come together without conflict. In a 21st century North American context, little effort needs to be made to lift up the three insofar as three represents autonomous members of the whole. In our hyper-individualistic society, we get the three individual pieces. But as we heard in the Genesis 1 reading, we are also made in the image of a triune God, and the way we think about God affects how we think about ourselves. And it is because we are made in the image of God that there should be no conflict between individualization and participation in the whole. Holding on to the triune image of God allows for the diversity of gifts among individuals to come together for the strength of the one group. Rather than assimilation, life in the one God who exists in three persons allows for a celebration of diversity and the valuing of the mosaic of individuals while still seeing that diversity as within a oneness that is God. Because the world is so often broken by conflict arising from the tension between the individual and the community, what is so cool about the Trinity is that it forces those who embrace it not to accept the world as it is. Instead, it forces us to work hard towards realizing a world where the individual and the whole coexist, not only in harmony, but also for the benefit of one another. So that's a big piece of the Trinity for me, the valuing of individual aspects of God while acknowledging that they move and are at work for the benefit of the one, the whole of creation. And that since we are created in the image of God, we are called to reflect this image as we move through the world, striving towards peace and justice for all of God's beloveds.
holy and loving God. In these quiet moments we come to you. In the louder moments we come to you still with longings and questions, regrets and wonderings. We lament, we mourn, we rage, we confess, and we hope. It feels almost impossible to hold it all, all of it, all at once, all on our own. But then we remember, God. We gather up the brokenness and we bring it to you. When all of our wrestling feels too long and too hard, when violence appears to reign, when the systems which divide seem to win, when we are all grieving collective loss. We realize that our troubledness has concealed your undivided love that does not falter, that holds it all, you who are holy love. When scarcity leads to fear, when we start drawing lines between what is ours and what is theirs and what is the only way and who needs to be rejected, we realize there is enough. There is enough for all. If only we realize it, if only we are brave enough to name it. We pray for all those charged with creating change, change in attitude, understanding, priorities, intent, for political leaders to hold true to their calling as carers for our world. That all responsible for environmental decisions can see beyond immediate economic concerns, creating a vision for a shared world order, enabling an environment of hope, speaking for the earth, for the burden of responsibility to be communal, and all harmful agendas to be shelved. We lift up before you, God the young, the vulnerable in every community, all in positions of trust, remembering all who tend earth and animal, sustaining our existence through food, and those who nourish our emotional lives in friendship, family, companionship, laughter and joy, we give thanks. We pray for all those in this community, as well as those beyond this community who are aching and grieving, ill in body or in spirit, those who are carrying burdens that are too much for any one person to hold alone. And we give thanks for your presence, for your patience, for your love, for your challenge, as we come to you over and over again, sometimes lost, but always, always found. Amen. Bread and wisdom 
untie the knots of failure, binding us as we release the strands we hold of others' faults. Help us not forget our source, yet free us from not being in the present. It is so very good to be with you this morning. And as you move into your day, into your week, I encourage you to consider the ways that the Trinity informs your understanding of the divine. And may the peace of Christ be with you. May the love of God dwell deep in your heart May the Spirit enlighten your way, and may you go in the comfort of God's care. Go in grace and go in peace. Amen. Holy, holy, holy Lord. Thank you.
hurt.